I mean Somerville. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about user stories, a technique that we can use to help with understanding the requirements for a complex system. Some Agile methods use user stories as the only way of documenting the requirements for a system and the development team use these as a basis for their implementation. So what's a user story? It's a, a personalised description of some kind of interaction with the system. It's a, it's a story, it's a, a narrative about how an individual user or a group of users uses a computer system to do something which they want to do as part of their work normally. User stories can be written at different levels of abstraction, from very broad description of a, quite a, a large task, down to much more detailed descriptions of individual activities which a user will engage with when using a computer. High level stories are broad descriptions of a situation and they're very good for focusing a discussion about what is required from a system. They're a technique of requirements elicitation, understanding what's needed, rather than a technique of requirements documentation. This is an example of a user story that we developed when we were designing a system, a digital learning system for use in schools. So we tried to envisage what would happen where the students in the school were working collaboratively in a project and sharing photographs in a, a secure way. I'll give you a few moments to read this story. I won't read it out to you. Now these high level stories, as I said, are, are ways of describing the system, but they're not really detailed enough to be used to describe the requirements. They're not enough for the development team to say, well, what do we actually need to do? And for that, more detailed user stories have been developed around a, a single interaction. This is an example of a more detailed user story, which might be used by a doctor who is prescribing medication for a patient and the information is recorded in a, a patient record system. Again, I'll give you a minute or two to read this story. The idea of user stories is to get users to relate to these stories so that they can put themselves in the position of someone who is talked about in the stories. And it's really important to achieve this that we actually personalise these stories. We don't talk about a user, but we talk about individuals using their name, Kate or Jack, which makes them much more real to the reader of the story. It's absolutely critical that these stories are written in simple language. They have to be written in terms that the user can understand. They can't be... You, that's the problem with a lot of requirements engineering methods that, that try and develop models and things like that. The users can't understand them, but stories are great for actually communicating with users about what they do.
what you can do with a user story or a detailed user story once you have it is you can break that down further into a set of detailed implementation tasks. And these tasks could then be used as a basis for cost and schedule estimates. How long will it take to implement the software that provides the support for that user story? In extreme programming, which is one of the earliest agile methods, their approach was to construct task cards which described each task, which broke down a user story into tasks and documented these task cards and then individually estimated on the basis of these task cards. I'll give you a few moments to read what's on this task card. Stories can be used to give the user some say in the implementation of the system. They can prioritise the implementation by looking at the stories and talking about which of these have to be developed first. What I have found is that stories are really effective in engaging users and getting users involved in the process and in communicating what's going on to other stakeholders. I had the interesting experience of talking about the learning system with a, the Minister for Education and politicians are not known for their technical expertise and he paid the compliment of saying this was the first technical document he had come across that he had actually been able to understand. But they're not that good for everything. User stories are not good for expressing detail and requirements, implementation issues. They're not particularly good at expressing non-functional system-wide requirements, requirements for security, requirements for reliability. So we need to supplement these stories and use them in conjunction with other requirements engineering methods. So user stories in summary are a great way of communicating requirements. They're a great way of talking with users. But we need to realise they're only one of the techniques that we should use when trying to understand the requirements for a system.